In this video, I'm sitting down with Steve Daria. He's a fellow YouTuber and real estate broker located in Florida, and we're talking about the state of the economy. This is part one of a two-part series. I hope you enjoy this video. What is up, everybody? Steve here. Today, I have a very special guest, Todd Sachs. He is very experienced, and we're going to talk all about real estate what's going on in the markets today todd thank you so much for being here today man hey steve my friend good to see you buddy as always if you guys don't know todd we're going to talk some about his background but we just want to jump into it give you guys as much value as possible and as always i'm going to uh, link up his youtube channel so be sure you guys follow him because he has some amazing guests um let's talk about that real quick you had mr lawrence how do you say his last name? Young? Yoon, Lawrence Yoon. Yoon. Tell, tell us about that interview real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah, so he's the chief economist at the National Association of Realtors, Stephen. I tell you, it was, a, it was a great interview. It was at the end of May. Uh, you know, encourage people to check it out. It was very informative. Uh, Dr. Yoon, he's a, um, he's a pretty smart guy. You know, we, uh, we chatted about where things were going the end of April. Uh, Steve, I had a video uh, that I posted that basically said that a buyer's market was on the way. And, you know, back then, I mean, uh, I was just looking at some initial uh, data and, you know, been in the business since 1989, serving the housing industry. And, you know, so I kind of challenged him a little bit on, you know, what he thought was, you know, coming in the, the next several months. And, you know, I mean, he did predict and did say that we would experience a housing slowdown like we're seeing. But the big difference was he didn't think that prices were going to go down. He thought that we would still be in an inventory shortage uh, because of demand. And I think, you know, there was, look, I respect him. Look, he's, you know, he has an important role here uh, for the business, the industry at large, not just for agents, real estate agents, but for the public at large. Uh, but I think he, like most economists, just didn't think that we would start to see what Steve, you and I see as boots on the ground. Do you do you think he has to, based on his position, and you guys got to understand, National Association of Realtors is a huge, huge entity. I mean, they have lobbyists in Congress and, and, and very political and everything else. Do you think that he has to tiptoe around the issues? Because we're going to talk about some of the, the current stats coming from NAR. Do you think based on his position and, and based on your interview and your feel that you got from him that he, he has to kind of control that narrative? Yeah, he said some pretty that's – a, that's a great question. He had actually said some things that were quite shocking to me that I was I was surprised he put out there. Um, you know, talking about the Fed and, you know, printing money and, the you know, quantitative easing and stuff like that. And these were things that I was actually shocked that, you know, he was willing to speak so freely about. Um, but, yeah, I think there is a certain amount of, you know, pressure on these economists. Um, you know, most of them, Steve, are bureaucrats. I mean, they work for, you know, Wall Street. They're they you know, not just, you know, Dr. Yoon, but a lot of the economists to their defense, you know, and, and I'm not protecting what they say, but yes, I think he was a little more in reserve, but I understand that, you know, they're buried in the books, man. I mean, they're looking at a lot of data that is, uh, is very backward looking, right? So they're looking at old stats. So they're not as connected as we are um, you know, is when we actually have an open house or we see a seller struggling because they're having a hard time understanding that they're not getting $50,000 over list price. And I think uh, National Association of Realtors, somewhere I saw in the last couple of days, the average, I think, was 63000 nationwide over asking price was, you know, so sellers are having a hard time understanding that. And I, and I think these economists, they just don't have the boots on the ground data or real up-to-date live data as we do, yeah. you know, in the trenches. 
Yeah, I mean, we're and we're with our YouTube channels as well. And by the way, I will link that exact video so people can look, watch it because it it's good, man. And, and I appreciate you bringing some of these uh, some of these really really intelligent people to the table and questioning them, you know, with some some hardball questions too. So uh, you you and Melissa keep it up, man. You guys are doing an excellent job there. Um, NAR existing home sales fell for the sixth consecutive month to seasonally adjusted annual rate of 4.81 million. Sales were down 5.9% from June and 20.2% from one year ago. The median existing sales price climbed 10.8% from one year ago from 403.800. And uh, that's down $10,000. However, from last month's record high, four thirteen eight hundred. What what do you what do you get out of that, and what's, what what do you see is coming in the future, Steve? And you know, and what you just mentioned and referenced. I mean, this is from the National Association of Realtors, uh, who's looking at all the data nationwide. Though that data is backward looking, uh, I think it's continually going down. And but you're right. I mean, this is a ten thousand dollar median price decrease in one month. This is from June to July. I mean, that's pretty massive. And you and I know. I mean, we look at these charts. You know, there's a Fred chart that I reference a lot, and I know you do as well. That basically dates back to 1963. That shows over time, you know, home prices do. And and by the way. Everything goes up. I mean, what was a loaf of bread in 1963? And, you know, right. what was a gallon of gas in 1963? So, you know, housing is no different than any other product, at least if the product doesn't go away. I mean, we may look at some vintage cars that were from 1963 compared to what they sold for then. I mean, they're even up, right? If you want a vintage car. Uh, but I think that what People don't realize when they say that prices never go down in real estate, they don't understand what we what we mean by that. And when we're looking at the data, you know, and we see what happened in the last two years, we know that's not sustainable, number one. We also know that it's not normal. This was not normal appreciation. This wasn't normal inflation. This was as a, re a result of multiple things happening. Number one, the Fed lowering the interest rate, you know, to just about zero created this mortgage frenzy and this price increase that, I mean, that's just, in my opinion, one of the largest contributors and there's multiple others. And that, that's, <clears throat> I think, I think you and I, as well as some other YouTubers, I think that's what why we've been kind of screaming at the top of our lungs, like, watch out, be careful right now, because you can get very injured. And, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But we, we're, we're sounding the alarms. And obviously, I know on your channel, my channel, Travis and Scott Walters and all these guys, we, we have a certain percentage of people that are like, you guys are crazy. There's no bubble. There's, you know, there's no correction. There's no crash, all this. And we're just looking at, I look at just common sense. Like if, if you're, if you're giving a, a, a druggie, a bunch of drugs, and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you pull those drugs out of the system, what happens? And that, that's kind of what happened with our monetary policy and the reduction of rates and everything else. Like, it, 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 our, our economy is sick. Um, let me touch on something because, and this is still according to National Association of Realtors, the inventory of unsold existing homes rose to 1.31 million by the end of July or equivalent to 3.3 months. Okay. I've been saying, you know, a healthy market should be like five, six months of inventory. And we still have historically low inventory. My perception is I'm looking at this and I'm like 3.3 months is, is very low. And we're seeing the most volatility in the real estate market in terms of buyers backing out, reductions of prices, 
median home values decreasing so quickly with a uh, relatively low amount of inventory, I think that people really don't understand what happens because we haven't even seen foreclosures come, uh, institutional investors starting to unload, um, distressed uh, landlords start to unload. What happens when we actually see that influx of inventory? Right now, we're, we're, we're seeing volatility, but do you foresee a lot more inventory coming to market? And if, if you do, what do you, what do you foresee happening? And, you know, this is a critical question because this goes directly after the naysayers on price reductions, the ones that say that prices aren't coming down. And, you know, before sort of I give you my thoughts on that, um, you know, the prices right now are coming down because of affordability issues. So when we're talking about price reductions and a lot of people are saying, well, you can't, you know, prices aren't going down because there's still 100,000 over pre-pandemic, 500,000 over yeah. pre-pandemic, whatever. You know, the first thing I like to say to that, Steve, is, you know, just not paying $60,000 over asking price and being able to buy a house for list price or a couple thousand difference, that's a price reduction, in my opinion, when we're talking about buyers. But what 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 we're seeing is that prices are declining because interest rates have gone up. So now mortgages are sometimes 35, 40, 50 percent more than they were a year ago for the same priced house. So two things are happening or that I see happening. And one is that now that mortgage companies are at a 22 year low on applications. Now that, you know, they're going out of business, two mortgage companies recently announced that they're bankrupt, they're bust. One closed their doors completely, one's in bankruptcy protection. We're talking about an industry that that houses, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs in just that industry alone. Now they're starting to reduce the actual you know, qualifications. There's three main factors that go into getting a mortgage. One is their credit score. One's debt to income ratio, right? And then the other one is loan to value, what the house appraises for. Well, two of those three factors are now being kind of reduced as far as qualifications. Number one, they're lowering credit score qualifications to encourage people that couldn't qualify six months ago to buy. And now they're allowing people to actually have a higher debt to income ratio, which which is insanity, right? I mean, it's we know these risky loans, but getting into the inventory issues about your question is that the first place, and you know, I come from a background of being in construction. Um, I served the new home construction industry for years as a contractor. I built houses myself through the years. The first place we're going to see this huge inventory increase are on these new homes because as they're getting whacked right now, I mean, they are getting crushed. Lennar dropping their, everybody dropping their prices, right? The problem is now they've got a backlog that they haven't delivered yet, and they have to explain to somebody that already committed to $50,000 more in purchase price why they're going to drop their you know, their price to these new buyers. So yes, we're going to see inventory pick up because of people backing out of their contracts, canceling their contracts. We're going to see inventory increase because these developers have, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of houses nationwide, these big builders, who's buying them? So that inventory is going to jack up. Like you said, I mean, we haven't even seen foreclosures, right? We're looking at this, you know, American Rescue Act that Biden signed into office last July, I think it was, the end of July, that still affords people that have problems paying their housing-related costs, their mortgage payment. If they're three months behind in their mortgage, you know, so we're still seeing a lot of this is being propped up and I get it. I get it. What are we going to do? We're going to drop the ball and let, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of people lose their homes. So, yeah, we haven't seen the, you know, foreclosure rates that's coming. You know that I know that it's six to eight months from now. This stuff's going to start to really wash out. Not to mention the people that must move. They 
have to sell their house. Yep. So yeah, inventory is going to rise. We'll be in a glut, Steve. We're going to be in a glut of inventory because in my opinion, mortgage rates aren't going down. And the reason I think that is simply because they're making it easier for people to get mortgages that wouldn't have qualified six months ago. They're increasing the risk for the investors, the banks, and the, you know, the federal government that's backing Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, you know, VA, all of these things. I think it's, you know, we're going to see interest rates go up, inventory, sales are going to stay down, in my opinion, for quite some time. So I um Speaking of interest rates, I did a video I don't know, a couple of days ago and I said one of the target markets that I'm personally learning about and going to be going after are uh, sub two, like basically taking over over mortgages. Um, and what some of the pushback, and I'm sure you see these these comments on your channel as well. People are like, there's no way people are going to get foreclosed on because they got locked into 2.75% interest, this and this and this, and there's no way. And uh, I'm like, you guys don't understand. People, circumstances happen, including job loss. And as much as mainstream media is out there talking, saying, look, job market's hot. You know, we have nothing to worry about there. I, and I don't know about your opinion on it, maybe we can touch on a little bit, but I foresee we might hit a level of stagflation. I think we're probably going to see high unemployment. And I don't care, even if you have a mortgage at 0% interest, if you can't afford that payment, you can't afford that payment. Your husband lost his job or your wife lost her job, and now your income depleted by you know 60% or 40% or whatever, and you can't afford it. You're, you're done. And then you stop making mortgage payments. And that's one of the reasons why I'm learning about sub two right now and, and literally hired uh, uh, Pace Morby and his crew and everything to educate us on it because we're going to need to figure out creative uh, scenarios to save people from foreclosure if we can, assuming the numbers make sense. And, you know, create that that win-win opportunity so that they don't foreclose and we can actually, um, you know, basically take over a really good loan on a property. Um, but what, what, what's your take on people saying, you know, there's no way people are going to foreclose because they have such a low interest rate that they locked in a year and a half ago or whatever? Thanks so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for part two, where I answer Steve's question about foreclosures, job loss, and so much more. If you enjoyed this video, you can let Steve and I know that you did by hitting that thumbs up. And as always, I appreciate when you subscribe to Saks Realty's channel, hit that alert bell, and it'll let you know every time we upload real estate content just like this. And cruise on over to Steve Daria's page and subscribe to his channel. See you next time. Saks Realty, Maryland broker number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.